I made a few bosses in the past, but I never created one that was realistic. In this video, I'll be using a 7.3 meter wheel-based bus body using a normal production engine and drive it in BMG Drive. Hey guys, it's Trice here, and let's get on with our bill right here. So starting with the panel material of this modded bus up in here, which took me a few minutes just to load this here bus mod body, because as you can see right here, this thing is heavily detailed from the outside and including the interior up in here, as it has pretty much like a basic interior up in here, which is kind of interesting for a modded like vehicle body in automation. So anyways, getting back with our build, so for the panel material, we'll be making this out of regular old steel with a light truck monocoque chassis because I did see how this exact bus is made, the ICCE bus, is that the first like half portion of the vehicle up in here, like where the hood is at, where the engine goes and all that stuff, this is in one piece, but the actual back end of the bus, like right in here where all your kids go and all that stuff, this part of the body is baited to the actual chassis to make the school bus. And the chassis material, part of it's made out of galvanized steel, but most of it is made out of regular old steel. With the engine placement up in here with this invisible-ish grill mesh that the mod author done. It'll be a front longitudinal and the front suspension. It's gonna be a little bit of an interesting choice here. So a solid axle coil up front and a solid axle leaf in the back. So for the engine, let's try to like semi-replicate a diesel engine on here, even though there's no such thing in automation as a diesel engine. So an inline six, so let's probably put the bore, I kind of thought this in the back of my mind, 100 millimeter bore for the engine and max this out for the stroke to 120 millimeters to get the engine size to 5,655 cubic centimeters or about 5.7-ish liters, rounding this up to the nearest tenth of a whole number. And we use push rod headers, also made of the cast iron. For the crank car rods and pistons, it's going to be quite torque heavy because it'll be turbo diesel and all that stuff, quote unquote turbo diesel. Let's probably use some of the best like materials, so billet steel, heavy duty forged car rods, and regular forged pistons, of course, from rock damper. So for the compression, most turbo diesel engines, especially the ones they looked up, especially for Cummins and everybody, is despite having a turbocharger, they still basically run this at like a 16 or a 17 point whatever to one ratio. So in automation, max is out to the extreme level of a 16.0 to 1 ratio with the cam profile and the springs pretty low up in here because it's not going to rev high. So let's start at 4,000 RPM just to start things off here with this engine. For the turbocharger, let's keep it a single turbo. Let's probably smart boost this and do all this later by fine-tuning this bad boy. And for the fuel system, it's pretty much obvious for a quote-unquote turbo diesel engine, so a direct injection single throttle setup with just starting off a standard mid intake and the fuel type, maybe an ultimate because you see here, there's no such thing as diesel fuel in the game. And I don't think automation themselves are planning on implementing a form of diesel fuel pretty much throughout this entirety like run of this game, even if it becomes released publicly rather than being in its early release stage as of right now. And finally for the headers, some turbo mid headers, keep it a single exhaust because, well, it's an inline engine up in here, we can't put dual exhausts. And the exhaust diameter are like a bunch of bus engines, 3.5 to start things off. And usual three-way baffle reverse, we got an earthquake. And we got some severe knocking going on, 70% of the reliability being deducted uh, for this engine here as the engine is knocking. Lower the compression, use a richer fuel map. I guess at a 60.0 with just ultimate fuel isn't going to work out whatsoever. Okay, so it runs good on methanol. We're at an 82 right now for reliability, and it's uh, retarded ignition timing because of the engine knock. Let's see here, and oh, some compressed gas works. So liquid natural gas, I believe, 145 AKI, and let's see here, uh, liquid petroleum gas... We're about 355, but we still got knocking up in here, as we can see over here, that it's losing power because of severe retarded timing. Of course, nitro methane ain't gonna work, methanol, so I believe liquid nitrogen, liquid natural gas will have to work for this vehicle as we put down the three way kinetic converter. So, fair amount of power 445, 790 pounds feet of torque. That's, that's above average for any boss up in here. So, what if I tune the turbocharger by reduce the turbine size so the turbocharger kicks in like quite kind of early up in here so starting at 1500 not that bad still making quite a bit of power what are we uh oh we're gonna stress with the torque stress for any of the components including rpm stress too 
So this might be a little bit overpowered for most buses of diesel vehicles in real life, so I'll pretty much call this engine final a 440 horsepower, 3400 RPM, and a torque rating of 801.1 pounds feet of torque at 2000 RPM. It's not that bad of a beefy engine, a 5.7-ish liter engine, overhead valve, just push rod heads, made in the year of 2005, which would be the same thing for this bus too, and whoops. So let's give you a brief listen of what this little wannabe diesel engine sounds like, right here. Yeah, kind of a letdown because we can see here at the loudest factor, we're almost at 25, which I believe is like decibels or I don't think it's decibels, pretty much like a percentage or whatever, whatever points that automation calculates. So for the drive type, it's pretty common for something like this, a rear drive with an automatic, excuse me, automatic six speed, I believe, with a top speed set, 134 miles an hour. Mm, we could probably do 120, I believe. It's way too fast for a bus, but hey, it's automation. Why the hell not, kids? And for the tires you see here, unfortunately, there's no dualies in automation, but I was kind of wanting to put some dualies like by myself, I actually have like working dualies for the rear tires, like one set of rear tires, another set that works, like actually works at the back here, but I don't know where to start on Blender and all that stuff to make this actually happen. So radio utility tires, maybe keep the wood phases, but do something with the rim offset, like bring these out a little. And for the brakes, of course, they both stop on a dime so you don't kill nobody on the highway. So a solid disc, maybe six piston, near max size, like a 380 up front. And a solid disc, four piston, 300s in the back, or 310s. So start off with 310. Under tray, it's a bust, who even cares? Brake airflow, we'll probably do 30, which is a little bit above average for most cars. And for the interior, well, I'll try to have like a full-blown interior on here, seeing that we do have a quote-unquote interior, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video here. So a basic interior, no infotainment, you just need like a little radio to, to like contact with your school board's dispatch or whomever. And a seating count, maybe a single seat up front, which is just the driver only, and max out the back, I believe. And a steering, a, it's to a hydraulic ball steering with just ABS brakes only and basic 2000 safety standards. It's just seatbelts, but no seatbelts in the back for the kids. So if you roll over, you'll be going through the roof and it'll be a live and die situation. And finally for the suspension, since buses go psh and all that stuff, probably for the air brakes and everything. So let's use an air suspension with wind tube dampers and pass sway bars running on a utility preset to see where we're at. So we are doing okay. Mediocre fuel economy at almost 11 miles per gallon, US miles per gallon, weighs like six and a half tons up in here, 13,000 pounds, and apparently there's no drivability, sportiness, or hardly any comfort like factor, but we do get a big safety factor here, and it did say something about the brakes, which are horrendous. Let's max these out, uh, front and back, max these out. Still not good enough. And hold up the rear brakes here. Look at the little, like, lineup in here, the rear grip. It say that the rear grip should overtake the front grip. Normally, it's the front grip is on the top, and the rear grip is on the bottom, followed by the front brake lines in red, and the blue is the rear brake line. Well, let's just 75 it and just live with it, I guess. And I don't think I need to adjust anything else up in here, so I might as well just build a bus as is. See that this body is quite easy to build? Either I'll probably do a time lapse, or maybe just build as is and just give you progress support. Because all we need to do is do like do the headlights, the grill, the school bus stuff up in here, livery, the colors, lights, and the interior. There's like nothing much to do. It's pretty easy to make, so I'll just give you progress support right here, starting right now. So first things first, to be in the federal government's compliance with the school bus yellow, copy and paste, well paste the hex value, and drop the flakiness, and boom, we got a yellow ass school bus. Bro. Bro, what the hell is up with this body? Look at the UV mapping, trying to put the, like, little, like, running indicators, like, orange lights, like, amber lights, on top of the school bus lettering here, and we got a freaking, look at this, a UV map kind of meltdown that we're going here. So when I got the lights on here with the red and yellow lights, or orange lights, for, like, when there's, like, a bus that's about to be pulling over to load or unload a child, and the red lights, uh, they go off with the buses stop, along with the stop sign pulling out to make traffic stop. But these freaking like running indicators, what if I... Dude. This is like a mediocre 
UV bappy, I mean, I get what he's making for a realistic bus body for us in automation, but it's just a UV bappy, it's just a freaking mid. Look at that. Just, it's all over the bus, including the inside with these, like, lines all over the place, including the front and the rear. This is, it's not even possible to, like, do these on here, which I'm gonna skip that, unfortunately. Okay, so trying to cycle through the headlights here, and apparently a lot of the headlights seem to not work with this body here. And what's even more funny with the transparency slider, these headlights here are considered windows. Like, why are they windows other than like a cutout where you can customize the headlights and giving us what we have to with this body? Look at all this cluster of junk right here. Why is there a cylinder, a rectangular piece, another rectangular piece, another rectangular piece, another rectangular piece, another rectangular piece, piece? Like, why are these, like, clusters right here? Alright, here's where I worked with, with the headlights that I have to for this body and how it's set up. So the headlights, two right here, indicators on the corner, and... Yep, this is why this mod body is a mid. Ah, jeez. Well, in the middle of trying to do the sides here, I got a frickin' amber alert on my phone. Straight out of Columbus. If I had my weather radio on at the time of that Amber Alert went off, like the emergency alert system, <laughs> I'd probably have a freaking heart attack seeing that the screen will go flashing saying like child abduction emergency, the alarm go off, and then hear the EAS details of the child, the suspect, their whereabouts, and all that stuff there too. But anyways, I hope the kid comes out okay and safe and all that good stuff. Hope there's no harm done to the child. Alright, so it appears that the exterior of this bus is done, so here's what I got right now for the exterior. So for the sides, I did put the fictional auto beam public schools type of like, school identifier on the bus here, including the triple zero from my Miss Jack and triple zero days with the three zeros for the bus identifier number. The knockoff IC logo, just a badge and then a little big old letter I, which you can see the same thing on the front too, right here. And the rear, as you kind of seen it all was putting together. Pretty realistic, got the red warning lights, and the amber or orange warning lights, school bus, emergency exit, another triple zero, a fake phone number, to like call the bus or bus company, or the public schools responsible for transporting these people on buses or something like that. And pretty much all that, all in line here, including a little emergency exit thingy right here with this little emergency exit like release inside the bus here, for the windows. Now let's get on to the interior, which I think I just used the old cheap seats right here, and then just like mirror these and bring them in the back, and then add some gauges and some like pizzazz with the interior and call this done. So let's grab these seats here, and I'll probably just drop these like every 10, oh, more than 10 maybe, uh, 60? Yeah, one row for every, no, one row for every... 65, we'll put a row of seats in here, so there's that, minus 65 in 3D mode, good. And we can only do like a few more rows left, like maybe five more of these. And I believe, lastly, are the rear passengers, so, yep. Not bad, not bad. Right up against the rear rails, just like that. I should probably maybe lower these, or keep them as is up in here with how the seats are laid out here. Well, anyways, I'm kind of satisfied of how the seats are with how they're laid out, especially with having a somewhat detailed bus interior that we got uh, got here by the fall of this bus body. So it's not like the old days where you had to like create like something like this, the railings, this railing here, and the steering wheel, and all these switches and panels here with some missing textures here. Come on, man. Now we have to do left with this still loading. Here we go. I don't know if I told you, I kind of hate how, like, this thing, like, takes so long to load, like, adding fixtures to this vehicle here. Like, like, all of a sudden, like, you want to put, like, kind of like something like this. Or a text on the bus, like, the word school bus, or emergency exit, the school name on here. It takes, like, an additional minute for all this to load, and it loads very slowly, trying to change the position of each fixture. So I guess all we got left here is just probably some, add some plastic, like, black trim to the speedometer, add the gauges, and we're probably done. Alright, so the bus appears to be complete up in here, so for the interior with just the gauges and everything, so unfortunately with like the fuel gauge, the temperature and oil right here, there's no such thing as the circular ones, kind of like with the speedometers and tachometers right up here, but with the, kind of like these kinds of levels right here for fuel, oil, and the temperature is only that you got the horizontal format, the left orientation format, or the right orientation format for either of these three here. 
So since these are circular gauges, I have to stick with the horizontal formats for the fuel gauge on the left hand side along with the PSI counter for the turbo wastegate pressure. And the right side for the oil gauge, the um, oil level, and the temperature gauge right here. And these two gauges right here that are now blacked out are empty and it will remain empty, unfortunately. So everything is set for this bus for its entirety from the exterior as well as the interior up in here. So I also renamed the bus here to the IC bus, aka the IC bus's real manufacturer name. And calling it the ICY, the IC school bus. Along with the engine name, the IC overhead valve diesel with the 5.7 liter turbocharged high output engine, aka Ho. Oh. So anyways, since we're all done up in here, before we export this bad boy to BMG Drive, despite our only four problems that we see here, such as the rear brake force being quite low, the rear damper being quite hard, the short gearing is reducing the car's top speed, the engine is retarding, ignition timing at the full throttle to avoid the knock, let's export it to BMG Drive to see how it drives. So here we are at the bottom map of Valo City, which is a street legal racing red line or whatever. Street legal racing red line or something like that. This map that was, I think, remade or ported over into BMG Drive. So here is our bus, all set here with some kind of off-putting textures with the, like, text up in here. Unless you zoom in quite close up in here, or, like, the numbers, the school name, even the word school bus. Kind of same thing. And damn, this engine sounds quiet. Let me give you a listen. I think I made the world's quietest bus. So anyways, despite me being over here, let's do our basic performance test, starting with the 0-62 acceleration test, then a 62-0 to zero brake test, and lastly, a top speed run with this big-ass bus. So let the acceleration test commence now. Accelerate. No wheel spin. That's pretty good. So we're flying through the gears, and what is this, fourth gear? Whatever gear we're in? Oh, this is a regular automatic, so 0-62, to 62, in 11.60 seconds of 690.68 feet. Pretty fair. I believe we're on some flat land here, so let's get ready for a brake test. Let's not do it at 61. Do it at 62, please. So brake. Damn it, it showed 63. Hold on. All right, brakes. Here we go, brakes. We're coming to a stop pretty hard. 62 to 0 in 4.26 seconds of 193.43 feet. For a nearly 7-ton vehicle, like 6.5 tons. Well, time-wise, pretty much of a mid- and distance, fair enough, I guess. I mean, you're gonna be screeching all over the place if any of the ABS brakes are not, but despite having the maximum size of 420 millimeter brakes for the rear and the front, and six pistons too, it's fair to a certain extent. So for a top speed run, I also kind of noticed with the bus, like when you go through like first, second, or third gears, it seems like it was like lagging to upshift for some odd reason. Is that how like automatics work at this game, it seems like? I know I built automatic car builds in the past, but it seems like with some automatic transmissions, it Damn, these tires are loud. Is it? Is this what like utility tires sound like in the game or some? God damn! So we're cruising through, no problem. We're about to hit 100 miles an hour at this little right-hand sweeping bend along the highway portion of this map here from the Street Legal Racing Redline series. A little bit of sway up in here, but it's as expected for a long wheelbase like vehicle like this. See, a little bit of swaying, but we're stable. So we're just shy of the red line. Once we hit red line, then it's a success. Wait for it. There we go. Red line at a 107, 108 miles an hour? 108 miles an hour is the red line, so it's crashed out somewhere. It's sort of time trial run. Is this a light pull up ahead? Maybe. Everything as is. Okay, then. We got the freaking barrier right here we crashed it to. So there goes a the tire, some loose polygons with the actual bus body and the nodes. No, there's no nodes attached to this. Okay, that's interesting. So anyways, we got some loose polygons all over the place up in here, especially with the doors, the right-hand side of the vehicle, the rear end seems okay, the left side not so good, and did any of the quote-unquote passengers survive? Not a whole lot, probably half of them will be dead inside this car, or this bus. So, let's do a time trial run to this bus to see how it actually performs on a track. Alright, so I changed things up to the Circuit de Monaco, it's one lap with a rolling start, so anyways, let's get started here, and ready, go! Mediocre rev up as so because we got the world's quietest diesel edge up in here with a big pussy ass up in here. Are we okay? What did I hit? Like, what did I hit? Hold on a minute. Did I hit like an invisible wall? Here's the skid mark. So let's go slow and I'll just. Is it the sign right here? The little back marker thing? Hold on. They put hitboxes on the little, like, 
marking, like the markers right here. Are you serious? I don't think I have the confidence that this bus will make it underneath the- Oh, there's the- Okay, we're good with the lights there. I don't think it's gonna reach the tunnel halfway throughout the map here once I make this right-hander. Micro drift, not that bad, but I still gotta watch out for those, like, markers and stuff like that. The flag markers, the light markers, like, right here to my left. Gotta avoid those at all time. Like I said, once I get to the bridge, like, the other side of the track here, I think it'll might make it underneath. I mean, I see the little bus thing right there, like, the little road marker there, but it, it should reach it no matter what. It should go underneath, no problem. All right, right-hand turner. Okay, okay. Slap in the freaking tire barriers just like that, and I thought we were all steering over that little left tire was gonna cave in, Jesus! And also for an interior camera, oh, I set the little freaking driver camera a little too high? Yeah, it's set a little too high because the mirror's in my face, but we could see the speedometer and the tachometer and the uh, oil gauges, the temperature gauge, and the fuel mapping, the fuel level, right dead center of your screen. How about the hood camera? Oh, nice. Hood camera is set to the perfect position up in here, so this looks pretty awesome, man. Do you agree with me? Let me know in the comments if you agree. Okay, here's this heroin left turn. I have to use the e-brake. We're going to hit the little shell sign. Just clipped it with the little shell and the Zelfer sign, so we're going to be coming up to the no textures. Spank that wall. I'm still fine. Come to the tunnel just up ahead. So it appears, yes, I will go under the tunnel, no problem, but it's just these little marker signs again. I slapped at them a few times throughout this time, Cheryl. I have to avoid those, no matter what. Alright, how will handle the chicane right here? So going 30-ish miles an hour, high 30s. E-brake again, and gun it at 60 miles an hour. That was mediocre, but it's doable. Tell you that, it's doable, but I watch out the greatest. So here's the final straightaway coming out of that chicane there. Did no problem swerving around it. So here's the starting lights right here. The Rolex. It's will cost me $20,000 for a damn watch. Uh, two minutes, 47 seconds. I'm not going to hit that. 600 milliseconds exactly. Which will put a second place compared to the first place car, which is the Mons R300. Oh, so I did this like a month ago. The little 50s Roadster build or something like that. Yeah, so that got a 222, I got a 247, so that's quite a difference between the two. So let's crash up ahead in these barriers, so let's just stop the camera, the simulation, and get a better angle of this. At 32 times slow-mo, what's it like crashing into the- let's do 16. 8 times slow-mo, crashing this up ahead of these barriers. Damn, took the impact pretty good! And... there goes the tire, and the engine is still okay. We, can we back up, like, go to reverse gear? Nope, we could just do an infinite burnout when we want to, because we're stuck in the barrier, just like that. So, rigor cam, here's a, a final look at the car, or the bus. Big-ass missing textures right here, because of the collision. And the left seems okay, the front, yeah, because I hit in the front. So, for the final part of the video, let's drop this bad boy down to the car jump arena to see if these kids will enjoy launching themselves off a ramp. So, let's get ready to spawn in at the top of the ramp, right now. So here we are, parked at the top of the ramp, so currently we got a 3-light, a 4-light, and a 5-light up in here. Let's get ready to launch ourselves with this bus here. Now, green light, with the world's quietest diesel engine in the game that I made currently right now, with this huge exhaust pipe that's realistic, and here we go, better 0-60 at 5.83 seconds at 253.29 feet. Max gears, over rev risk, let's wait. We need a speed. 138 miles an hour, so no over rev risk, so we're gonna be- let's hit the brakes, let's land and over end, so... 280 meters that we landed, and... Tires deflated, we just land this bad boy! Are we gonna go over the pond? Nope, we're gonna get stuck on the pond, so... Shut the engine off, thank you, so engine's floating with water at 80%, and jeez, there's a big-ass node right here that's been... No, it's not a node, but just parts of the loose polygons of how weird this body is set up and everything, so let's just, um... Let's just inspect it right here, screw putting put in the flight land. So as the kids and the driver of the bus is drowning, we got some serious damage with the bus. I don't know how to do a free cam. Yep, this is what happens when you jump down a ramp full of kids or not full of kids with a driver or not with a driver that's present in the bus. You get something like this. Now for the final part of the video, as I currently accelerate, let's see if we can get a high-speed crash test. Go to a true high-speed crash test at the final bridge pillar by going as fast as we can, hit the bridge pillar to see what the outcome is. So we're at back skiers, 110 plus miles an hour, hop the curb. I mean, we're a big-ass buzz of huge tires. We got this, so stop. It's an overlapping crash at 128 miles an hour, roughly. 
And let's see 32 times. 32 times slow mo in effect. Overlapping crash. There goes a the tire. And a bunch of stretched, like, polygons and all that stuff with the bus and everything. So, eight times slow mo, I believe. This is eight times, right? Yeah, that's eight times. Nothing else to full time. And I believe we may have killed the engine. No. The radiator is leaking and the engine is starved of oil, so it. It runs, but we could just. We could back up, but we can only go forward. Like, we're backing up, like, struggling to back up, but we can go forward. No problem. Just, just go forward. No problem whatsoever. So, final look before we depart. Like, literally, literally depart. So, there goes the left side all crinkled up. The rear end seems pretty okay, despite a front end collision with the exhaust node. Going through the license plate. I think I... There goes the license plate. I think I moved the exhaust node, I believe. So now it's inside the bus, filling up with the carbon monoxide and all that stuff. All those noxious gases. And the right side's terrible. Same thing with the front end. So what are my final thoughts on the IC bus, the IC school bus that I built right up in here? So for it being a realistic school bus, I'd say it's pretty realistic per se with the exterior style of how school buses should be and how they are in real life in the United States. With the words just school bus plastered all over, the like school name, the bus number, emergency exits, and pretty much all that good stuff. Same thing with the interior, all the seats in place, some of the gauges that I could put with this bus bike that was given in automation. And with the performance of having a fairly beefy 5.7 liter turbocharged wannabe diesel engine. I mean, it's on the power heavy side for a bus, but hey, it's a school bus. You gotta get the kids from point A to point B without being late to school. I mean, what else does it serve? And for those who are interested in this type of content, please be sure to like and subscribe so you won't miss out on any videos like this in the future. So this is Tries Rising Up, and signing out.